Hello you guys, uh, this is Ben, otherwise known as Vertigo. Some of you may know me from Twitch, uh, I do flight sim streams over there. And uh, what I wanted to do, well, first of all, um, I've made a handful of YouTube videos before, mostly just uh, flights, nothing particularly instructional. Uh, what I'm going to do today, uh, well I want to get back, kind of get into the YouTube swing of things and do this more often, but I'm actually going to make a tutorial video of sorts today, a three part tutorial. Um, instructional set of videos on how to fly the PMDG NGX and it will cover everything from uh, picking a route, the, the flight planning process, um, deciphering the charts, I'll touch on that briefly, um, and then the setting up of the aircraft, that, that'll be part one, and then setting up the aircraft from a cold and dark state, um, departure, uh, climb, uh, up to cruise, that'll be uh, part two, and then part three will be descent planning, the descent the star, the approach, the landing, and the shutdown. So, um, this obviously is part one of the series, and what you're looking at here, this is the, the flight planning uh, video, what you're looking at here is flight awareness. This is how I plan all my flights. It's incredibly useful. It's a, uh, a live flight tracking website, but they also have uh, uh, routes and so forth. This is going to be of more use to you if you fly, do your flying in the U.S., which I do. Uh, many European flights don't have a route attached, so you would need to look elsewhere for that. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of videos out there that can help you out. I think Matt Davies, Bellens, has a, a video on finding a route uh, if you're over in Europe. You can also just randomly generate a route via PFPX. Uh, but in the U.S., generally the routes are attached to the flights, and generally they are correct. Uh, with few exceptions. Now, you can fly any route you want. The only issue would be if you're flying on Batsim, which I do. There uh, are certain certain routings that you have to take, um, depending on where you're flying, when you're flying, um, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, if you're flying offline, which this tutorial is going to be offline, I'm not going to incorporate Batson because that would be another set of variables that would just really complicate the situation. I might do a Batson tutorial uh, or tutorial series down the road but now is not the time, and, and putting that in the mix for the NGX tutorial would just really confuse you guys, so I'm not going to bother doing that. Assume that your routing is correct. So first things first, you're going to want to put in your origin airport, and for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be flying from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. A very short flight, um, fairly straightforward routing, so you'll be able to uh, absorb a lot of information uh, in a short period of time. So you'll enter the identifiers for each field, Las Vegas and Los Angeles. And you'll do a search and you'll see a whole list of flights. Um, obviously we're flying the NGX so we want to find an aircraft uh, that, that fits that. The 738 is what we'll use, but obviously this could work for the 600-700 uh, or the 900. So let's see what we can find. Um, 738, here we go. American 183 departs at 7 a.m. That could potentially work. American 338, let's go American 338. That's a 10-15 a.m. departure and we will use that. So you'll click there on the uh, <coughs> on the flight number and you'll see this page here where you have the flight number itself uh, you can see the departure field and the departure terminal and gate and the arrival field and the arrival gate uh, and as well as the scheduled departure time uh, what I like to do is I actually like to jot down some of this information now you can you know take as little or as much of this as you want there's only a couple things you need to have um, or that you know it's very convenient to have. So first things I like to jot down the the gate and the terminal because that uh, allows you to spawn, uh, put your plane down in the sim where it would actually be. You don't have to do this. You can depart any terminal, any gate you want, but I like to do it for the sake of realism. So I'll write down T1, Delta 11, uh, and then we're going to 47 Alpha at Los Angeles. I also like to write down the departure time. You can see the scheduled departure time is 10 a.m. So I'll write down, or 10.15 a.m. And then you probably want to be on the ground half an hour before that uh, in order to give time for pre-flight and taxi. So then I'll write down 9.45 and I know that's the time I should set it in the sim <clears throat> when, I'm, when I'm loading up. Uh, then the other two things you need from this, your altitude. Now on many, the rule of thumb is if you're flying westbound, uh, you need to be at an even flight level. If you're flying west or eastbound, you need to be at an odd flight level. Um, on certain routings, there you are limited. So if you're flying from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, you cannot go any higher than flight level 280, I believe. 
uh, just because it's such a short flight, they have altitude restrictions on that, on VATSIM. Um, if you're flying offline again, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, you know, make it as realistic or unrealistic as you wish. Um, I know from New York or from Boston to JFK, you you top out at flight level two two zero. Um, so you have a good bit of discretion here. If you want to play it totally by the book, you can take what is listed here. Uh, if it's a longer flight, you can get your own flight level, which is based on weight and aircraft type, so on and so forth. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to play it by the book. We'll write down flight level 240, and we know that is our flight level. So I'll jot that down. <clears throat> and then the other thing you need here is uh, the routing. Now, I know this might be a little hard for you guys to see, but here's the routing. And this contains, generally speaking, uh, some routes will be different. This contains a SID, boat 6 a transition fix off the SID, Hector, and then a star, and this is the star of the arrival. A SID is a standard instrument departure, and a star is a standard uh, terminal arrival route. Now, uh, you can see the star here is the River 2. If you're doing a longer route, there are going to be intermediate waypoints in here. It's not like it's just SID, transition, star. If you're flying from Los Angeles to New York, you're going to have intermediate fixes, meaning just fixes that guide your route between the two airports that are neither on a SID nor a STAR. You also will likely have jetways, which are just a series of fixes that have been uh, kind of consolidated into a jetway to make flight planning easier. Um, in this case, since it's such a short flight, we don't have enter any intermediate fixes, we don't have any jetways, we simply have the Boat 6 departure, the Hector transition, and the River 2 arrival. Now the Boat 6 departure has the Hector transition, and the River 2 arrival has the Hector transition. They share a transition, which is great. It makes our life easy. Um, on a longer flight, you're probably going to have a, a SID with a particular transition, uh, some jetways, some waypoints, and then a star with its own transition. <clears throat> but in this case, they share one. Um, I can go over flight planning and routes at another time. There's more to it than this. I'm trying to give you a, kind of a, a quick and dirty idea what it's like but um just know you're you're likely going to have almost always they're going to have a standard instrument departure a SID you'll likely have a transition although not always you then may have waypoints and jetways depending on the length of the flight and then you're likely going to have a standard terminal arrival uh with uh with a uh, its own transition as well not always but often you'll have a transition in this case our routing is boat 6 hector river 2 so what you want to do is you want to highlight this and I like to just copy the route, <clears throat> and now you have it. Um, so save that for a minute. You're not going to immediately do anything with that route. Next, we'll come up to Sky Vector here, and Sky Vector is great for flying. Again, in the U.S., uh, has charts for pretty much every airport in the U.S. So uh, what you can do here, again, if you're flying in the U.S., is look up the ICALs for each of your fields. So Las Vegas, and then Los Angeles. So I have two tabs, one for each airport, and if I scroll on down here, you'll see we have a bunch of charts. We have standard terminal arrival charts, the stars. We have departure procedure charts, and then you have instrument approach charts. So what you're going to want to do here is <coughs> pull open your, your chart. So boat 6 is our departure chart. If we go back and look here, you can see it's the boat 6 departure, so we know that's the chart we want to open. And this actually has two pages. Um, and you can see a bunch of information here. We'll get to that in a minute. And if you look at, at the second page, again, a bunch of information in text form. Let's do the same thing with Los Angeles. It's come down, but we're going to want arrivals. So we'll go to standard terminal arrival charts. And we will find our arrival, which was the River 2. So here it is. There's only one page. And you'll pop that up. You can see it's uh, you need to rotate it a bit so you can read it properly. And here is that. So. <coughs> Uh, boat 6, it's an RNAV departure, it's basically area navigation. Um, certain aircraft are RNAV equipped, others are not. The NGX is RNAV equipped, so you are capable of flying RNAV SIDs and STARS. That does not mean you have to, there are uh, airfields that don't have RNAV uh, departures or approaches. That doesn't mean that you have to fly an RNAV, simply because you're RNAV equipped, it means you can. Um, so just to be clear on that. 
you're going to see a top altitude. A lot of uh, charts will have this listed. If not here, it will be on the informational page. The top altitude is basically what you need to maintain when departing that field, um, at least initially. And of course, you can climb yourself up higher. And if you were uh, being controlled uh, on BATSIM or any other network, they would give you a higher climb up to your flight level at some point. But this is your initial climb. This is what you're going to get when they give you your departure clearance. Um, don't worry about that too much. Just We'll get to this later. Uh, this will help when setting your MCP initially. Uh, and then you have, you can see all these fixies, and these are for each of the runways. So depending on the direction in which you're departing, uh, you'll have a different routing. Uh, but it's all one SID here, and then you can see it all spits out down two transitions, either the 29 Palms VOR or the Hector VOR. And in our case, as uh, if you looked at the flight plan, and recall, it's the Hector VOR is our transition down here. Um, so depending on the runway that we'll depart, we'll need to understand this. It's fairly straightforward. These are uh, runway 1s, uh, so you're, if you were departing off the 1s going this way, you'd have a heading of 010, you'd go up to 2,681 feet, and then you'd make a left-hand turn, and you'd be to Bessie, Whitla, Jeb, Boach, Hector, and then of course different fixes depending on the runway, a different, different routing. Um, Again, I don't want to dive too much into how to decipher charts because this is uh, its kind of a topic for another time. I'm trying to give you an idea so that you can be up to speed uh, while uh, following the tutorial. But um, as far as you might ask, well then, okay, there's different fixes depending on the runway. How do I know which runway to take? That's going to depend largely on the weather um, and time of day. They might have noise abatement procedures. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to be departing into a headwind. So the direction from which the wind is blowing is the direction in, er, in which you want to take off. Um, I have yet to look at a METAR or a METAR. Uh, we can do that shortly, but uh, just know you're going to be departing into the wind. So if the wind was uh, at 250 degrees, you'd depart off runway 25. If it was at 010 degrees, you'd depart off runway uh, 01, so on and so forth. Um, and then if we actually read this, you can see they have descriptions for each particular runway. So take off runway one left, one right, climb on this heading to this altitude, and then, you know, hit these fixes at these altitudes, so on and so forth. And they have that for each runway listed, which kind of is what I was just describing to you, uh, except in a much more clear way. Uh, the FAA is better at explaining this than me. <laughs> so as far as the river to arrival goes, um, again, Hector transition, you can see Hector's right here, you also can see it right here. They share a transition. <coughs> Excuse me. So from Hector, we'll be tracking to Dipso, to Gram, and now we have these altitude restrictions. In fact, let me actually touch on these here. Bessie, you can see 230K knots, 230 knots below this line. Wherever the numbers are, that's where you need to be. So if you see 230 below a line, uh, you need to be at or below 230 knots. Uh, you can see you have altitudes here between two bars. This means at Whitla you need to be between 7,900 feet and 10,000 feet. Right here, boats, you can see 13,000, 1, 3,000 above that bar. That means when you get to boats, you need to be at or above 1, 3,000, 13,000 feet. And you can see these listed on all these various fixes. Um, if they give you climb via, again, I'm, I'm kind of branching off here. If you get climb via the SID, you want to hit the res restrictions. If you hear climb and maintain, you can ignore the restrictions and just go straight up uh, at the best rate of climb to the altitude you've been assigned. Um, these generally aren't terribly important, especially on departures, unless, of course, you're in an area that's quite mountainous, then you'll probably want to uh, pay attention to them. Otherwise, you can kind of climb at your discretion, but you know, if you want to do everything by the chart, you're more than welcome to, and this is kind of where the FMS comes into play, and we'll go over that when we're in the aircraft. Um, and again, you can see the same thing here between at Graham, between 17,000 and flight level 210, and right on, bang on, 280 knots. Um, you see rust, you see Habso here, at or above 14,000, you see river between 12,000 and 14,000, and this would be the, the routing on which you track for your, your star and then Los Angeles is here. Um, at any rate, again, this isn't too much about deciphering the charts. It's more about uh, <clears throat> understanding how to fly the plane and so hopefully this will give you some basic knowledge. And real quickly, let's look at one more chart. The uh, or ILS 25 left. 
Um, again, where you land is going to be dependent on the weather. Uh, but generally speaking, um, going into Los Angeles, if it's not late at night, you're going to be landing to the west on the two fives or two fours. Um, so having knowing that now, I can pull open this chart. If you weren't sure, you'd want to check uh, a meter and pick your runway based on that. Um, but I'm I'm pretty confident it'll be two five left. So just looking at this chart, you can see there's a uh, ILS frequency. There's a approach course. You have minimums down here at the bottom. Uh, you have various altitude restrictions for each fix along the ILS. Again, don't want to get into this too much. Um, go over this more when we're planning for our descent um, within the aircraft. But uh, just quickly show you this and kind of give you brief, brief knowledge. You can see missed approach altitude as well, altitudes and missed approach procedures. All right, you guys, so I wanted to uh, cut the video here and put in a bit of an edit. Uh, because my recording software didn't want to change windows. So, uh, as far as the METARs go, uh, you can look up METARs for each of your airports starting with your departure field. So we'll type in KLAS. Um, this is just the aviationweather.gov. It's a US USA.gov website for, uh, for uh, aviation weather. Uh, obviously, you can find a METAR on many, many sites. Just Google METAR and you will be able to find something that works for you. If we look up Las Vegas, you can see we have the identifier, date and time, wind, uh, visibility, cloud cover, temperature, dew point, altimeter. Uh, just briefly jump over this. What you want to look for when you're planning your flight is your wind, which is right here. This is 230 degrees at 08 or 8 knots. So this means, knowing Las Vegas, we're going to depart off runway 25 right. Uh, this will depend on the field you're departing, what runways are available, but um, if things uh, are ideal, you'll be departing into a headwind, which we can do. So 2-5 right. If we go back, we can do the exact same thing for Los Angeles. Look that up, and you can see same information. The wind here, however, is 250 degrees at 11 knots, 1-1 one, one knots. This means we'll be landing, as I expected, on runway 25 left. Again, because you want to depart and land into a headwind. So knowing that, what you can do now is come to your flight planning software of choice. I use PFPX. Uh, you can use whatever you want, Plan G, Simbrief, whatever works for you. Um, so, but I'll show you how I use PFPX. It, it's pretty straightforward. So American Airlines, Flight 338, Las Vegas to Los Angeles. You'll need to enter this information. And then you'll need to enter your departure and landing runways. Uh, you don't need to worry about the rest of this information. Aircraft. Uh, you could have a tail number and registration for each and every aircraft you had. That would be a lot of entries, so I just put in the aircraft type and have one entry for each. So Boeing 737-800, A320. In this case, we're using the 737-800. Two other things you need to do here, initial cruising altitude or flight level. You're going to want to put in your flight level, which from FlightAware uh, we pulled earlier is flight level 240. And then if you have a step climb, you can put one in. If you don't, which we most certainly don't, you'll put no here. Optimization, this is a new feature, don't worry about it. Payload, you want to generate a land, random payload and it will give you a random zero fuel weight here. Write that down. Um, if you want to use your own, if you want to create your own zero fuel weight, by all means go ahead. I just randomly generated one. It was 129,201 pounds. Write down 129.2, round it. So 129.2, you need that for later. Fuel. Um, if you're flying into a busy VATSIM event, you could put in some hold time. Uh, you could take a bunch of extra fuel and contingency fuel. Um, since I'm flying in the U.S., my policy is U.S. domestic, and then I just, as a rule of thumb, add extra time, 5 minutes, contingency time, 10 minutes, just so you have a bit extra if uh, you get stuck on the ground or in the air for a little bit. Routing, you'll put your route in here, so I copy and pasted this from... Uh, flight aware earlier, as you uh, likely saw, boat six, Hector, river two. Of obviously, your route will depend on where to and where you're flying from, uh, and the aircraft in which you're flying. But for the NGX, we're RNAV capable, so we have the boat six departure, Hector transition, river two arrival. And then lastly, if you want an alternate, you can put one in. I just put in San Diego. This isn't a huge deal. You'll then click compute flight, which I've already done. If you come up to the results tab here, you'll be able to see some information. Um, the only thing you really need from this, right, is uh, make sure your flight level is correct. 
initial altitude under flight plan should be what you filed for, which it is. Your zero fuel weight should match 129.2. We wrote that down earlier. That's correct. Your minimum, or rather your reserve, you need to write down your reserve fuel. It's 5,448 pounds. Write down 5.4 or whatever your reserve is. And your release fuel, it's 14,506 pounds. Write down your uh, release fuel. Um, you'll need those for later when you're setting up the FMS. Uh, if you want to export this, if you have certain software, you can export it to that software. If you want to uh, send it to BATSIM, by all means go ahead. Um, I'm not flying on BATSIM for this tutorial, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, and it isn't really relevant to flying the NGX. So, that concludes the flight planning bit. Um, obviously, I'll come back with part two, which will be setting up the aircraft, uh, starting it up from a cold and dark state, departing, climbing out, um, and up to cruise. So. End of part one, and I will see you guys for part two.